Good morning. So today we're going to set up Loopy Pro as a simple guitar looper being controlled by the Nectar Pacer. So the Pacer is a great MIDI controller to use with Loopy Pro. It's really nice solid hardware. It's got great feeling foot switches uh, similar to the RC300. And one of the best things is, is you can get these LEDs to coincide and respond to the loop state in Loopy Pro. So the first thing we're going to do is go on to the online editor for the Pacer and we're going to assign MIDI messages to each button. We're going to assign each foot switch to a MIDI channel and to send out a trigger. In this case we'll be using CC messages. You can think of the MIDI channel simply as the channel that two devices use to talk to each other. It's good to have a separate MIDI channel for each device in your setup. Since the Pacer is the main device in my setup, I'll be assigning it to MIDI channel 1. One thing to note on the Pacer is this button here is not MIDI assignable at all, so we don't use this button at all. So we'll start on the first one and we'll give that the command of CC1. And we'll do that respectively as we go through all these CC1, CC2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, sorry, we skipped this one, 7, 8, 9 and 10. Also for each button we want to assign a value of 127 on the down press. If you don't do that basically nothing will happen. In addition to get the LED feedback we want to go through and select our colors which you can also do in the editor for each button and then you want to turn on the MIDI functionality for the LEDs on each pedal as well. I'll put a link to the Pacer editor down in the description. You can edit this right on the pedal itself, but it is a lot easier on the editor, so I won't go into how to do it on the pedal. Um, that is explained in the manual. So now that everything's set up on the Pacer, let's jump over to Loopy Pro and get everything set up on that side. So what I've created for this tutorial is just a very simple project in Loopy Pro. I'd recommend any time you're starting a project in Loopy Pro to start simple. Get everything working the way you want it to. And once that's all good, from there you can expand on that to your heart's content. Anything you can imagine, you can pretty much create. So let's jump over to the mixer page quick. This input here is for my vocal mic. The second input is going to be for my guitar, which we'll come back to. There's so many different ways you can set up Loopy Pro. Uh, some people like one button loopers which I have not set up yet. Um, this tutorial is going to be for basically two buttons per track, which is similar to the way boss loopers work. I've been using boss loopers for about five years now. That's what I'm used to. I like to have a separate play record overdub button plus a separate stop button. So that type of configuration is really easy to set up on the pacer. So let's start with track one. We go up to this hamburger menu in the right hand corner. Go to MIDI Learn. Now we're going to tap our first loop. Now your instinct might be to go ahead and just MIDI Learn right here on this first window that pops up. That might be what you do for a one button looper, but it's not what we want to do. So actually we're going to back up one. This shows all the actions available for that clip. We're going to go down to Record. And we're going to do one thing before we MIDI Learn this. If clip has audio overdub, that's typically not going to be desirable because what that will do is if all your loops are stopped and you push the foot switch to play this loop, it'll go right into overdub, which you don't want. So we're going to change that to play if stopped, overdub if playing, which makes much more sense. Okay, now you can see Loopy's listening for MIDI. So I'm going to go ahead and tap the foot switch down here that coincides with loop one. You can see it's learn CC2 and you can see that this is now slightly filled in that it's been MIDI learned. So let's back out of this. We're gonna go to our play stop and that's gonna be the button directly above our record play button on the pacer. We're gonna change that just to stop and then we're going to tap that button and learn it. You can see it's learned it, so we're going to back out of that. 
We need to learn one more action for this clip, which is clear. And all we need to do is hold down our stop button for a few seconds until it says hold here, then it's read it as a hold. And we are good to go. Now let's just back out of MIDI Learn. We can test that pedal. So let's test the record button. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, so two, you can three, see that's recorded. Four. Now we'll hit it again just two, to test the three, overdub. Four. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. One Let's and test two our stop and button. three and four. And then we'll test our play. One and two and three and four. One and two okay. and three and four. Everything's working. We're going to test our clear. There we go. So now all we need to do is simply repeat the process for the rest of the loops here. Going to speed through this. Okay, so now those are all MIDI learned. Excuse my voice, I've been down with the sickness for a few days and it's really done a number on my vocal cords, but we're gonna get through this. Let's create an all start, all stop button. Let's go down to our edit screen. We're gonna add a widget. I'm gonna tap on that. I'm gonna make a press action. And we're gonna do play stop. Our target is going to be all clips. We're going to set our quantization to none, which is here. This is going to behave like your typical all start, all stop button on a boss looper. Let's exit edit. Next, let's set up a simple guitar channel. Okay, I've got my guitar plugged in now. What we want to do is check each of these channels. Um, this is coming in on imp input channel one for my interface. We want to separate these, so number two here is coming in from input channel two. Just so you know, you can name these inputs up here. So we've got sound. Um, one thing to keep in mind, and this is one of the great things about Loopy Pro, you don't always want your mic going to every single loop channel, and that this is where you can change where your uh, inputs are going to go to. So for our mic, let's make it so it only goes to the blue channel. Let's let our guitar go to all channels. This way your mic won't bleed into your instrument loops. Now I know that not everybody can afford some of the nicer apps that are made for guitar. Um, there are some really nice ones. Uh, one is Thu. Uh, Nembrini is a really nice sounding one as well. But for this tutorial, we're going to try to make just a decent guitar sound with uh, Loopy's built-in effects. Let's add a compressor. An EQ. And a reverb. Just keep it really simple. By default, the reverb has a 100% mix, so let's bring that down. Okay. If you go into the EQ, you probably want to cut some lows, so let's make a high pass. Bring that to about 100 hertz. Maybe bring it up a little here for some clarity. You know, it's not the best, but it's passable. Um, especially if you're playing acoustic, you can really get a nice sound with just the built-in uh, EQ and compressor. So I just remembered a couple more things you might want. Um, let's add another widget. Let's make this one an all clear. To go to press, clear clip. We're just going to do all clips. And then also, we need to MIDI learn our all start stop button. So let's go to MIDI learn. That's this one here. 
And I'm going to hit the, the um, foot switch on the far right. There we go. Now if we just get record a couple loops here. See if that works. See if clear works. You can name these widgets and color them as well. Okay, well everything seems to be working good. I'm going to test this out. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments. And uh, best of luck to you and happy looping.